Hello, mark makers. We have some queries around the safety of cadmium paints or cadmium in your paints. And we know that these are the beautiful, bright, intense colors in the yellow and red that we use. And in order to explore that safety, I just want to chat to you about, well, three different things. First, I'll just explain a little bit about the use of cadmium in paints. And then we will do some practical experiments uh, and compare some uh, cadmium free paints and some with cadmium in them. And the third thing we'll do is actually pull them out, the colors out with some white to see how they hold that uh, clarity of the cadmium red hue or cadmium yellow hue. So three things. First of all, it's a little on the background and history. When you start looking into cadmium and non-cadmium uh, paints, you'll find that the jury is still out. If I look at sites based in the EU, uh, it is not uh, considered uh, listed as carcinogen and does not require any uh, warnings on the paint. But in the United States, it does. Now, the studies I believe that the United States is referring to are those done with the actual cadmium element. So cadmium comes out of the ground and uh, toxicity was first seen in the 1800s of people uh, using it to polish silver and the fumes uh, poisoned them, but they were able to be, those uh, bad effects were able to be reversed. Um, in terms of red throughout the hi history. Um, red was greatly valued in China. Uh, yeah, the Romans actually controlled the price of cinnabar, which is how they made the vermilion red. And uh, Hindu, the old um, uh, book of hours, things we would see being able to make red pigment paint has been really uh, important throughout history. And vermilion is what was used, but to make that, um, taking the cinnabar um, and extracting it by using mercury and sulfur. And this was very poisonous. So in 1919, when uh, the cadmium was made, the cadmium red in particular, as well as those yellows, uh, it fixed and held its light. Uh, so light fastness is a big issue. So. You paint something today and it's red, you want it to be red in three years or five years or 20 years. And so people were so excited when cadmium came in because it was not as toxic and it held its light fastness and had that beautiful clarity of intense color. So now we look at it and say, is cadmium uh, what could be causing risk for us? Now in how to paint with acrylics, in the orientation section, you know that I covered those uh, simple, basic uh, approach to safety in the studio, and that was keeping your hands clean, if you're worried, using gloves. Um, Maria, you mentioned uh, using a mask, and I thought, oh, you don't need a mask, from what I'd been reading, because that was EU-based. But of course, our, here's my, uh, Here's my uh, CAD Red Medium from Windsor & Newton. And if you look on the back, there is a warning about inhalation. And that is because even though this is an English company, they distribute all around the world. So they have to have the warnings for wherever it might go. So jury still out, but the reason we have it is because it holds its intensity of color and it was so much safer that would what was used before. And so that brings me to looking at the cadmium free options. Windsor & Newton has cadmium free in their watercolors and gouache, but not in the acrylics. So I looked at who does and I got the Liquitex. So where's my, well. So Liquitex have uh, CAD free colors in the acrylic. So I got those for us to do some little experiments and tests and see what holds true for us 
because all of our color mixing charts are made with the Winsor & Newton and I use those because they stay, the color is the same wet or dry and that saves you an awful lot of time as an artist. So all the things I mentioned to you are just to try and be practical and explore things and now we will go to some actual colour mixing to test and see what the results are. So here is the CAD Red Medium that we usually use. I'm just going to put a little daub of them right here onto the page. The CAD Yellow Medium and CAD Yellow Light. So these are the ones we use in our basic palette. And what I did was go and buy these uh, as Winsor Newton has um, CAD free colors in watercolor and perhaps oil. They don't have them in acrylic. So I got the Liquitex acrylic. Now, one thing I noted was this CAD Red Medium was twice the price in Liquitex than it was in Windsor & Newton. So let's see if we get our money's worth. And so there we have again, CAD Red Medium, CAD Yellow Medium and CAD Yellow Light. And what I'm going to do is just pull this up so that we get a clear picture of that beautiful intensity. of that CAD red medium in Windsor & Newton. I'm just going to keep all of those brushes separate and then I'm going to pull down on my Liquitex CAD red. Now the other thing of course is because the human eye is so much more sophisticated than the camera I might be able to see things slightly different to you so um, still beautiful uh, red not quite as uh, thick this is the heavy body but not quite as thick to use and is very um, very bright so a little bit more fire engine would you say a little bit brighter So not quite the depth but that these things only matter depending on what you're exactly looking for in your painting. Now let's keep going. I'm going to go up with the CAD Yellow Medium. And give us a good solid block there and then I'll pull down with the Liquitex version of the same one. Again clear bright lovely color and Just again slightly uh, lighter, brighter perhaps. And now I'm going to take that Cadello Light that gives us when we mix it in our blending exercises. Uh, for the greens, that gives us those Queensland greens. 
that I call it matte, <laughs> the bright, intense ones, as opposed to the blue greys that we get from using the, uh, in our greens, it, from using the CAD medium. So there we have it again, the comparison. I'm pulling down the Liquitex one. And again, looks slightly brighter to me, but you know, my eyes are now starting to go in every direction. <laughs> so I'm going to leave them to dry uh, while we go on to look at um, mixing with white because drying is important for us um, when we're looking at is the paint the same wet or dry. Okay, so what I've done is in that same sequence, I've got the Cadbread Medium from Windsor & Newton and then Cadbread Medium from Liquitex, Windsor & Newton, Liquitex, Windsor & Newton, Liquitex again. All right, so we're just seeing if uh, or how the intensity and hue holds when we mix things with white. So I'm just going to... Um, we always, with blending, I shouldn't already have a dirty brush, okay? But I do, because it's on there. <laughs> I didn't want to wash it all off. Okay, so, let me see if you can see what I'm doing. Yep. So I'm just going to put a little bit of white into my Winsor & Newton Red. And we'll work back down. So we've got pure red and then it's going to be a little bit of color, of white. So a little bit of change. Yeah. And then a little bit more. Not as beautiful as Vicky's color changes. Did you see those beautiful charts she put up? Whew. <laughs> All right, so we're just seeing how that changes. It does not go a pastel pink, does it? We want it to stay holding that original red. As we add in the white, so we know what's happening when we're trying to create a painting because our paint does things that we consistently recognize. That's why making these little charts is just so wonderfully valuable. Okay, so now, sorry, just make sure my brush is clean. This little mongoose brush is hanging on, there we are. All right, now we'll get the Liquitex. I should have got the white first. Done. <laughs> get the white first then. Now I'll get the Liquitex. Now let's make that first one. Okay, and we're just wanting it to see if it's going to hold its hue while we mix in some white. bit more let's make sure it's comparable to the one next to it but I certainly can see a shift happening here 
again, I'll have to look back to see how the camera sees it. And actually when I went into one of the art stores that I frequent, um, they had done an experiment too. And they found the same as what I'm seeing here, which is a little bit more of a pasteling happening um, rather than the paint holding. And maybe if I was oops, to do this really correctly, uh, you know, I would have bought the, the Liquitex plain as well. Uh, but we're just comparing with what we usually use and seeing if this non-cadmium, so it's not a very controlled scientific experiment. <laughs> but for me, there's, uh, I don't know if you can see the kind of, I'll say, brick readiness, you know, uh, as opposed to heading more pastel. So there's a slight variant there. So now we're looking at the next, which is Cadillo Medium and the Windsor and Newton. So I'll just take up this white here. To see how it manages the addition of white just add a little bit more down the page Just a hint there. All right, that's the CAD yellow medium from Windsor and Newton. And now I'm going to take the uh, Liquitex Cousin. So in the light, the um, yellows, not seeing a lot of uh, difference given that my, um, you know, I'm not actually measuring out whether my blending is precise in amounts of white. This is, yeah, just slight shifts in more eggy there in the uh, Winter and Eugen. And let's go to brush properly clean. Cacolo light, and, and you'll remember, as I said, this is what we, we'd mix into the ultramarine blue to get um, uh, our uh, very bright grains. Let's just take the Windsor and Newton. Uh, but this is also, you know, your lightest highlight. Highlights on things are very rarely um, actually white. You know, there's always a reflected color in them. 
and that very lightest one, particularly on skin where the light's just hitting the really light light. And often it's a cadulo light that you might have in there, just a touch of to really bring up the lightest light. So a very useful color and great to have done your color charts to understand exactly what it does. Just a light light. Now I'll take the other ones in Liquitex. We'll see if we can see any difference. The Liquitex uh, paints here tend to be um, not as thick uh, and they they do spread very nicely. I'll put that, maybe I'll put that over here. But overall, because we are using cadmium, we would hope to see a lot of similarity, right? Because it's the same name, like, uh, when people are asking me at the beginning of the course, can I use this one? Can I use that one? Uh, in terms of brands, at least we can see um, that it, the quality of these, because they're called cadmium, is certainly comparable. Uh, I just stuck my brush in the wrong one. Too much talking. <laughs> I'm on Cad Yellow Light and it's from Liquitex. Liquitex, good. Okay. <laughs> Just, it was inevitable that I lost it at some point. That really light. light enough to compare hmm yeah still more egginess in there so uh, the thing that's significant for us, we're looking when we're right up here with this uh, clean, intense color in this level, does when we pull the white into that color, does it hold its color? And overall, yes, um, I would say as I agree with the uh, staff in shop that there's a slight... Um, uh, what's the word, uh, getting more pastel over in the uh, Liquitex and when you extrapolate that out into a painting it could have quite a difference um, from what you were trying to do because once you mix in say with a blue you, that will have very different purples or you know with a green so it's it's all the mixing that is where, really where you see the uh, things staying the same or things really starting to influence what you were doing um, in a way that was not how you'd measured. So it's why we do our own charts initially so that we can really get consistent uh, for so many reasons, because when you come back to a painting later to touch it up, you need to know the formulas you used in the first place. Um, uh, and even from when you did the first pass of color to when you come to the details. So. That's our little experiment there. Now, if I go back to our, let me see where that's in your view. If I go back to this and I've sort of got touch, touch dry. Now, is that the right direction? Yeah, that's the right direction because that's how I tore it out of the book. So 
this is um, uh, pulling down is Liquitex and pulling up is Winter Newton. And so do we see a real difference wet to dry? So it's where I, why I kind of left a little lump there. Go back to, oh, I need a clean brush. So the Winter Newton, I went up. Now I'm just gonna pull it out a bit. Is it the same wet or dry? same and then oh, so many brushes here I've lost count and then is this the same wet or dry looks pretty good having any white on my brush uh, and so oh, I did winter in it first wet or dry and then oh, yellow water. wet or dry Okay, so they're looking, both are looking pretty good in terms of um, looking the same when it's wet or dry, which is a significant factor for me because I have used paint brands that have so much filler in them that I come back to my painting the day after and think, didn't I fix that yesterday? <laughs> Am I going mad? And uh, indeed, I had changed those highlights, but I changed it with a paint brand that went flat when it dried. So, so these are, are both staying pretty good. Uh, so our cadmium to non-cadmium, um, you know, looking pretty good because we're going to get all kinds of differences in the way paints are made and filled. Um, uh, for me, I would still be staying with my Winsor & Newton because I see more depth and intensity in the colour. Um, but that's our little experiment. It is not a perfectly controlled experiment because I did not purchase both sets of Liquitex and blah, blah. But it's just enough for us to see the difference because we've been talking about cadmium and non-cadmium. Uh, we've reviewed the fact that uh, why the cadmiums came in, because they were so much safer than, uh, certainly with the red, than the uh, vermilion, and really held the intensity and also were light fast. And then we've also looked at the fact that in different countries in the world, sometimes it's seen as okay uh, to have the cadmium in your paint and in some other countries it, it isn't and those studies do tend to be based on the cadmium compound not the cad cadmium pigment but in order to be safe overall um, the industry is looking at non-cadmium alternatives or cadmium free alternatives and we're just checking them out ourselves at this stage um, I will just try and keep my hands clean and stick with my uh, Winsor & Newton cadmium red medium, cadmium yellow medium and cadmium yellow light. Thank you.